tonight. Forced from their homes with little notice, another Regina Care home closes and residents and their families want answers and affordable housing. I just also know that uh, we let we let our fans down. The Riders head coach is out, but his boss, the general manager, signs on with the club for another three years. Start with a test shot. Plus, how an organization in Saskatoon is helping former gang members remove the physical markings of their past. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Monday, October 23rd, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Two more Saskatchewan care homes are facing an uncertain future. Last month, the Regina Lutheran Home announced it would be closing next spring. Now, the Orange Tree Living Care homes are in the city and closing their doors. But as Jesse Anton reports, it's on a much shorter timeline. Seniors are leaving their home, but not by choice. Kelly Pearson's mother, Jean Thompson, moved into Precious Memories Villa back in June after a bad fall. Now, just four months later, the 93-year-old who's living with dementia is being told to leave. We were approached in the hospital by the owner of Precious Memories and she offers, offered us a spot and we took it, thinking that this would be until the end of her days. Sadly, that is not the case. On October 4th, Thompson, along with nearly 20 other residents living here and at the Parkview Villa, were told by the owner both homes were closing at the end of the month. They're in their twilight years of their life. They've lived a, a good life and they deserve better. In my mind, this is elder abuse. Emails originally sent to residents' families said they had to be out by November 2nd. But last Friday, they were told financial issues could not be resolved and residents had to leave as soon as possible. Most left over the weekend, but some, like Sue Mitchell's mother, are staying put for now because they paid until the end of the month. It's unnerving. That's the word I was using today. This is all really unnerving. And uh, uh, she isn't really absorbing all of it. Orange Tree Living runs these personal care homes. CBC News called and emailed its CEO several times on Monday, but did not receive a response. While the homes are privately owned and operated, they're licensed and monitored by the Ministry of Health. We contacted the province for comment, and a spokesperson said they'll respond Tuesday. This is your grandparents, this is your parents, your, your aunts and uncles, your neighbours. Times have got to change and somebody has to stand up and take responsibility. The time is now. While Pearson recognizes it might be too late for her family, she says their story deserves to be told so more seniors aren't kicked out of their homes on short notice. Jesse Anton, CBC News, Regina. We are watching the weather conditions change and develop in our province this hour. Our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, is here. What has come of that special weather statement that we all woke up to? Uh, it's gone, actually, now. It has uh, disappeared, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to get snow in places like Regina and Saskatoon. All that remains right now is this snowfall warning in portions of west-central Saskatchewan, where places like Kindersley, Rosetown, Swift Current, Leader, over toward Outlook and Watrous could see up to 10 to maybe even 15 centimeters of snow by the time we get to tomorrow morning. That also means that we're going to be seeing some blowing snow too, and that means that there will be some reduced visibilities in spots, maybe down to less than a kilometer in portions of western Saskatchewan overnight. And as we head into tomorrow morning, even there could be some reduced visibility along the Trans-Canada and between Regina and Saskatoon on Highway 11, that likely going away by the afternoon. So not only that, highway conditions going to be slushy and messy and drifting snow often at times. Snow could be heavy, two to three centimeters an hour in the snow fall warning overnight. Good idea to have an emergency kit ready if you have to head out, Sam, and your cell phone charged up. More on this coming up a little bit later. I'm so not ready for this, but thanks, Ethan. <laughs> it's coming. You're welcome. <laughs> Ah, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are looking for a new head coach after losing the last seven games in a row again. The club decided it is not renewing Craig Dickinson's contract, but the team's general manager is staying put and getting three more years to build a winner. Adam Hunter has the details. Saskatchewan Rough Riders president and CEO Craig Reynolds says Jeremy O'Day is the right person to lead the front office. O'Day received a three-year contract extension after the Riders finished the season with a 6-12 record, missing the playoffs. 
there's probably a half dozen things that a general manager needs to be to be good at to be successful in this league and and Jeremy is uh, the best that I've seen in in all areas of uh, in all those areas. O'Day will get the chance to hire a new head coach. Craig Dickinson will not return after back-to-back -back years missing out on the postseason, both with identical seven-game losing streaks to finish the season. You know, I think he, he fully understands the expectations of, of the organization and uh, he understands that, you know, we, we didn't get it come anywhere close to, to doing what we, we wanted to do. So how does O'Day plan to improve a roster that has not won a game east of Mosaic Stadium in the last two seasons? I don't think this, that we're looking at a situation where we re need to rebuild our team. I really feel like we've got a good foundation of young players, um, you know, but we, we, we definitely have work to do. I mean, we, we finished six and 12 um, and that's the reality of it is, is we just weren't good enough. As for the players, they cleaned out their lockers on Sunday. Garbage bag day has come early for the Riders the last two years. The Riders' highest paid player, quarterback Trevor Harris, was lost to a season-ending knee injury in June. The 37-year-old is under contract for next season and would like to return, but he can't make any promises. My last play can't be me getting carted off the field, but at the same time, I'm not going to you know, say it's not. You know, I always take time to reflect after every offseason. CFL contracts are not guaranteed, so Harris's status will remain up in the air. Incredibly, perhaps ironically, Harris was set to be cleared to practice next week had the Riders made the playoffs. Adam Hunter, CBC News, Regina. The federal court is set to decide this week on the final approval of the First Nations child welfare compensation deal. After a 16-year legal fight, the compensation is for those who experience discrimination through Ottawa's underfunded First Nations child welfare system. The federal court, if they give us final approval um, today or this week, well, then we'll start working on that immediately and um, start working in the best interest of our kids and to make sure that they're, um, they're not re-traumatized through their, this process and to make sure that we're giving them supports. About 300,000 First Nations children, youth and family members are eligible for compensation. If approved, the proposed $23 billion settlement would be the largest in Canadian history. The Trudeau government has also set aside an additional $20 billion for long-term reform on on-reserve child welfare systems and family services. It is the first day of school since the provincial government passed its new Parents' Bill of Rights. Now, if a student asks a teacher to use a different gender-related name, the teacher must receive permission from a parent or guardian first. Pratush Dial has more on how people are dealing with this new reality. With the new law now in effect, school feels less safe to Silas Kane. I am so hated for just existing and being who I am. The 15-year-old came out as transgender five years ago to a teacher before he told his mother. She said other children won't have that opportunity. I moved to Canada in 2007 from the UK um, and this isn't what I thought I was moving to. I mean, this is really awful, scary. Jessica Fraser and Meadow McLean both have transgender children in the school system. There were several gender diverse kids and the teachers were amazing. They're upset by the new law, but feel confident some teachers will still find creative ways to support children. They just worry it won't be enough. Supported in research that having one safe adult that you can um, discuss these things with saves lives and prevents suicide attempts and death by suicide. And so the fact that we're potentially taking that away is just an atrocity, really. I'm going to quote Mr. Rogers. Let's look for the helpers. Dr. Sarah Dungewell is a Saskatoon psychiatrist. She says the public backlash to the law has been encouraging and that mental health professionals, when given the opportunity, will still support children. We have not been in a well enough funded mental health support system in, in years, so we are all quite experienced with trying to make the best of a challenging situation. We're going to keep working on that. Other mental health supports. Well, we know there's not enough of that kind of thing in schools um, just because the, you know, the funding just isn't there. Um, 
So, you know, that's really not a realistic option. How many more trans kids have to die before they realize that this isn't okay? Brett Dishtayal, CBC News, Saskatoon. Leaving a gang isn't easy, but it is possible. A Saskatoon organization that helps people leave the gang life behind is now erasing physical reminders of the past. Laura Sharpaletti has that story. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good, good. You ready for today? Yes. Awesome. Okay, let's take a seat. Session number three? Yes. <laughs> Every time Santana Longneck Kuliner sits in this chair, she gets to see her tattoo fade away a bit more. The bandana tattoo is an unwanted reminder of her time in a gang over a decade ago. I thought it would be cool to put it on my body, to have it to be a symbol, to be recognized, um, to be known that I was a part of that gang. Eventually, Long Neck Kuliner left the gang to escape the violence. I want better for my children and I didn't want to give them the example of that to see their mother as a gangster or you know a woman to be affiliated with any type of gang members or still have involvement in that life. Want to go over any of the aftercare instructions? Long Neck Kuliner says getting her tattoo removed feels like getting her body back and what could cost her thousands of dollars is being done for free by Straight Up, an organization that helps get people out of gangs and on with life. People who in the past were um, scratching them off or trying to remove them in other ways because they had no other means now can come and get it done. Hey Devin. Hello. How's it going? Devin Napope got his tattoos in prison about 15 years ago. Ready? He left the gang a few years later and yet... I'm going in for an interview. You know, I already have to worry about my skin color, you know. And then on top of that, I got to think about the tattoos and the, the stigma that goes with them. Start with a test shot. Napope says Straight Up's tattoo removal program is giving him a fresh start. I'm able to be me. It's a resurgence in my, like, uh, in my who I am. So it kind of gave me the opportunity to figure out who I am and understand what I really want for myself now instead of uh, looking at reminders of the past. Straight Up got the tattoo removal laser earlier this year through funds from the province's gang violence okay. reduction strategy. Good job. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News. Perfect. Saskatoon. That feel? Good. To be fair, Ethan did warn us all week last week that this would happen. A misty, rainy start to the morning in Regina and that cool weather continued right into the afternoon. And things might look even more different by the end of the week. But if you haven't started to pull out the warmer clothes, now is the time. Ethan will elaborate after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters gathered in Saskatoon and Regina over the weekend. They're calling for a ceasefire and peace between Israel and Hamas. And the occupation. And the occupation. Yesterday in Regina, protesters convened outside the legislature and on Saturday, the Saskatoon chapter of Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East gathered outside Saskatoon City Hall. For the first time since the war started, aid was allowed into Gaza with 20 trucks entering on Saturday and more than a dozen yesterday. But protesters say it is not enough for the 2.3 million people who live there. Organizers say that they will continue to gather and to protest until there is a ceasefire and peace. This weather update is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz Regina, proud member of the Capital Automotive Group. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now with a look at your forecast. And oh my goodness, that is snow behind you. I was not emotionally prepared for this moment. No, I'm making sure everyone <laughs> knows ahead of time. Yes, we are indeed expecting snow. It's here, actually, in some parts of the province right now. And uh, really, 
right in the snowfall warning area. Gee, it's uh, like that's there for a reason almost. It is moving <laughs> in from Alberta. That's kind of where this system is originating from. And there are some heavier bands starting to be picked up right now along the Alberta border. So just how are things going to play out? Well, of course, we're seeing that snow here right now. I think the bulk of it probably going to be falling in the overnight hours tonight for a lot of us, especially kind of in the western half of the province where we're seeing those warnings. Keep in mind, if you're along kind of the far southern part of the province, I'm going to call it maybe south of Highway 13. This is mostly going to fall just as rain for you. You're not really going to see any accumulation from this. But even by tomorrow morning, as you get started, as the commute uh, starts taking place, we will still be seeing snow falling in but likely both Regina and Saskatoon as well. Again, probably wet and melting a little bit, but there will be some amounts that will be heavy enough to keep that snow on the ground and temperatures dropping overnight to, uh, to keep that on the ground as well. But then, just as quickly as it comes, it's gone by the time we get to later tomorrow afternoon and into the evening hours, and we're just left with cloud cover. But that's not all the snow that we're going to see because there's another system that's moving up from the states as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. Where this lands, though, is going to be dependent on this area of high pressure that clears things out through central Saskatchewan heading into Wednesday. So next couple of days, we'll have likely a better idea. And there's a couple of rounds of it moving through Wednesday, Thursday, and potentially even as we get into Friday as well. So just from this one system moving in overnight tonight into tomorrow morning around 9 a.m., probably highest amounts around the Kindersley Rose Town area and kind of the 15 centimeter range. Regina, Saskatoon picking up around five or so, not much east of there. And even as we go through the day tomorrow, again, the south mostly just getting rain and we're not adding too much. Winds, not going to be a primary factor with this, but in western and southern sections overnight and into tomorrow morning could be gusting in the 40 range. So that'll be enough to get that blowing snow going and likely reducing visibilities. Things will pick up again as we get that next system heading into Wednesday. And then there's the temperatures. Yes, we have to talk about some pretty cold temperatures moving in with this area of high pressure uh, coming in in the next couple of days. These deep blues that you see here, likely some overnight lows in western Saskatchewan getting close to the minus 20 mark. But for Regina, we probably won't get that cold, but again, mid-minus teens as we head into the Wednesday-Thursday time period. Not a single day above freezing, I'll note here, for the first time in a long time for Regina's forecast, but things eventually do begin to clear out. Saskatoon and Regina, I've put you both at about one to three centimeters in the early morning hours tomorrow, and then Saskatoon, you won't be seeing that system that Regina pot potentially will be getting Wednesday-Thursday. Things begin to clear out, but staying cold after that, Sam. No, thank you, but thank you. Yeah, uh, it had to happen, right? <laughs> no, we've, we've waited a we, while for this. We thank, have. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> you bet. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break. A First Nation in southern Alberta is bringing back an old innovation with the hopes it'll help them cope with climate change on the prairies. Stephanie Cram has more. People from Siksika Nation in southern Alberta say it's getting windier. Living in a valley, you can get those extreme winds, especially when it's coming down a hill. And we have a lot of roads that are going up hills and down hills. They're seeing the impact of climate change on the landscape. It never used to get this windy. And a few years ago, we had a windstorm that took the rooftops off of some houses on the east end. Now the community is turning to a century-old farming practice to combat this new challenge. Soon this bare prairie landscape will include rows of trees, otherwise known as shelter belts. The plants serve as natural wind barriers, shielding homes, livestock and people from bitter prairie winds. Shelter belts aren't new to Alberta. In 1903, the federal government launched a national shelter belt program as part of its bid to attract farmers to the prairies. A landowner can just ask for some free trees and they would come back and plant them and they would really um, increase that kind of land cover. Over a billion seedlings were handed out before the program ended in 2013. Even though the program didn't explicitly exclude First Nations, a technicality prevented farmers living on reserve from receiving free trees. Because they didn't own it the same way, you couldn't say, this is my uh, township and range and my address, please send the trees to this area, and then you'd go to town and pick them up and plant them on your land. 
Now, more than 100 years after the program started, that's something that Siksika is changing. The First Nation is planting rows and rows of trees with the help of Edmonton-based nonprofit Project Forest. Together, they decided on 14 species of trees that will survive the area's conditions. We picked to plant hundreds of thousands of Okanese poplar at our Sitsika Nation Community Shelter Belt project because of all the poplars out there, this performs the best in full sunlight, lots of heat and limited amounts of moisture. But the reality is not all the trees planted will take root. Sitsika has tried to grow trees before and sometimes not super successfully because it's a very challenging climate. Next year, these seedlings will be planted in Siksika Nation. Right now, they're small, but in about 10 years, they could look as big as the shelter belts at the University of Saskatchewan School of Agriculture. This is a nice long shelter belt, a double rows of Siberian elm, a tree species that they brought from Europe that came over and fit well into this prairie climate. And match the increasingly hot and dry conditions climate change is bringing to the prairies. In addition to blocking wind, they trap snowdrift, hydrating soil during the spring melt when crops are beginning to sprout. It's the drier weather that we're seeing too in the summer and the spring, you know, the early melt off, the less rain, it's impacting our grounds. Once the trees are planted, Siksika plans to incorporate edible plants like Saskatoon berries, raspberries and medicinal plants that have disappeared from the area. Our relationship with all living beings is as equals. So to see them coming back, it's like they're coming back home, is what one elder said. He said in Blackfoot, they're coming back home. Stephanie Cram, CBC News, Siksika Nation. And Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. And the shelter belt's going to come in handy in Saskatchewan as that snow starts to move in tonight. Regina, I think we'll start to see things get underway around midnight or so, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Winds uh, a little bit breezy from the east, and that we'll continue to see that tomorrow morning, and that will make that minus 3 probably feel a little closer to minus 10 with a little bit of light snow lingering in the morning. But I think by the noon hour, most of that will have ended and just a chance of flurries, but things just below the freezing mark. Saskatoon just flurries for you a chance of that at midnight. I think even as we get into the 8 a.m. hour, there is uh, most of your snow will have fallen by that point already. But again, feeling like minus 13, not too much of an improvement heading toward the afternoon, Sam, but at least the snow will have come to an end. All right. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. And before we leave you tonight, a remarkable comeback story to share. Ashley Lugner from Fort Coppell has been wakeboarding since she was 14. She's a six-time national champion and one of the best riders in the world. But a bad knee injury forced her to give it up years ago. But the prospect of competing at the Pan American Games pulled her out of retirement. Now, 38, she competed in the wakeboarding finals in Santiago, Chile today. I feel pretty good. I'd like to say that I'm speechless because, you know, the goal for me was just to actually come to the games. Um, so getting to go into the finals with some of the top girls in the Americas is pretty amazing, especially after taking a really long time off wakeboarding and then coming back just for this. Lugner placed fifth overall. The 19th Pan American Games runs until November 5th. So far, Canada's third in the medal standings with 12 gold, 15 silver, and 13 bronze. Congratulations. And that is it for us tonight. For News Anytime, you can head to our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or download the CBC News app. Ethan and I will be back with more local news and weather at 11. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.